Welcome back to the channel. For in a number of videos, we've used this data processing pipeline where we take our raw data, we scale it using Zscale or some other comma transformer. We then will pass that scale data to PCA. And then from there, we could build a secondary model. We can visualize the data, but that's usually the endpoint. In this video, I wanna demonstrate how we can actually take that PCA endpoint and reverse it back to the original data in a way that actually applies a compression effect to that data. And that's because by virtue of running PCA, we're actually removing some of the small, less significant features. And so I wanna help you build an intuition on what it's actually doing and how we can leverage this to improve our data analysis insight. So rather than writing a bunch of code, I've already pre-written it. And so I can just work on examples demonstrating this compression effect with this data set we're pretty familiar with. So again, we are looking at this mass spec data where we have several bacteria samples. In this cell, I am actually just cleaning the data moving our samples to the index. And then you see our M over Z are now stored in the column headers. This is a common format for data analysis. Here, we are scaling the data in this first step using the standard scaler. We're setting the output to Panda. This will produce a data frame. We then are setting up our second step in which we are performing PCA with one component. And we're also using a Pandas data frame as the output. And for the final step in the cell, we're taking our raw data X and scaling it using our standard scaler. In the next cell, we're actually performing our PCA. And so we're using our PCA fit transform method and applying that to scaled X. And this gives us a very familiar output. When we look at the scores, you see that we have just a single component called PCA zero. And for the purpose of this video, that column name doesn't matter, but to see how we do maintain our data frame structure. So what I want to demonstrate next is how we can now start to try to understand what the output of our PCA is. And this will help build that intuition as we reverse our method back into this compressed data. So we plot a scatter plot of our explained variance. That's how much of the variance is explained when we do PCA. And so again, PCA is attempting to summarize the variance in these new variables called principal components, which then capture most of the variance within that data set. And so if we have a line of at 70% or 0.7, and you see when we have a single component, we're only capturing about 20% of the variance of this data set. And so when we go back to try to reverse this data, we can use the PCA inverse transform method on our scores data frame. We will get our compressed scaled X. Next, we can go back from here. I want to show you what that output looks like. And so now we have our scale data as a NumPy array, and we can convert that back into a data frame shown here. And so here we have our data frame where we have now taken our compressed X, our compressed scaled X data here. And we have also now reversed the Z scaling. And so Z scaler also has an inverse transform method and we are using the original X index and original X column names to produce this compressed data frame. So in the next step, we want to now actually plot what this data looks like when we apply this compression. And so we have two plots that are overlaid. The blue plot is the original input X data for a particular sample, this EFACM9 sample. And the orange is the actual compressed data when we build a PCA model using a single components and then use the inverse transform methods to walk back to that original data set. So now let's look at another sample. Let's just choose another sample that ran, looks like sample 12. You can see how even when we have some of this high frequency noise, a lot of that is removed in this compression. And so those are the smaller features that we actually give up when we do this compression. So let's improve this a little bit. Let's see how, how much variance we need to capture in order to have the blue and orange trace overlap a little bit better. So we don't need to see this again and we don't need to see this again. So let's clean this up a little bit. So instead of a single component, let's use, let's look at two components and see what we've got. You know, with two components, you see we're capturing a little bit more of the variance. Maybe we're close to 40% of the overall variance. Again, this line is at 70%. We run all these cells and you see pretty quickly, we're already starting to get back into where we're capturing a little bit more of this variance within the data set, but you can see we still have done some sort of compression on it. Let's just track this. Let's look at another random sample. 
And you see again, we're giving up this high frequency noise, even for the Luafi samples. And so let's change our input now. Instead of passing an integer, if you pass in a fractional value, let's say 0.7. And so now if we look at this plot, instead of where we normally pass in some integer value when we, when we set the fractional value here, it attempts to capture that much variance with the least number of compressive components. And so you can see after nine components, zero through eight, we've now reached this 0.7 threshold. And now our model is capturing at least 70% of the variance of this data. If you run this through, you see that now we're seeing a lot more overlap between our compressed data and our original data. If you go back to one of the early samples, you see we're now capturing even more of those finer features. And that gives you some indication that there's so much noise in this experiment that the PC is actually doing a great job of leaving a lot of this stuff behind and capturing the features that are critically important. A lot of people will run out to around 95% of the signal, of the variance. And so you can see here, if we keep our 0.7 line, how we begin to flatten out. And I should have said sooner that I'm actually plotting the cumulative sum of the explained variance, but hopefully you could glean that from the chart. If we proceed to run these cells below, you see that now most of the compressed data looks exactly like the original data with a few deviations around the most extreme of points. If you go back through our random sample, if you go back through our data frame, you see that now we're seeing some of the other examples showing some smaller features that are being captured and, and this continues to be the case. So I hope this gives you some tuition about what PCA can do when it comes to compressing data. This is a powerful technique, not only for analytical data like this, but also for image analysis, where you can give up some of that detail in order to make your data set smaller or to just focus on capturing the most important features within your data set. In this case, you saw that even with a maximum amount of compression, we're capturing a lot of the major features around the 700 to 800 range and giving up a lot of this high frequency noise in the lower MRVZ ranges. And this is a common observation for a lot of analytical data. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.